Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise to give my full support to the bill on the health and citizen security levy. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Economic Development and the Youth Economy, and Minister for Justice and National Security delivered his budget policy statement on April 25th 2023. The theme for this budget policy statement, Mr. Speaker, was health and security, pillars for sustainability. This budget policy statement, Mr. Speaker, reflects the importance that our government places on health and national security as important pillars to improve the lives of the working people, in particular, the poor, vulnerable and elderly who do not have health insurance and are also likely to be the victims of crime and criminal activity. Indeed, Mr. Speaker, everything our government does is enshrined in the fundamental philosophy of putting people first, the theme of our manifesto. In our manifesto, Mr. Speaker, Health and citizen security are areas we identified and must be given high priority in achieving our objective of putting people first. In our manifesto, Mr. Speaker, we stated clearly our fundamental objectives as it relates to health and citizen security. In the case of health, Mr. Speaker, we indicated that the St. Lucia Labour Party will pursue a health policy that is patient-centered, evidence-based, equitable, accessible, and affordable. These are the things we said, Mr. Speaker. In the manifesto, Mr. Speaker, we identified 11 strategic priorities for the health sector, which we intend to deliver over our first term in office. I wish to mention three of these critical strategic priorities which will radically transform the health sector and which will advance our progress towards achieving sustainable development goal number three, namely good health and well-being. These three strategic priorities are as follows, Mr. Speaker. One, universal health care will be implemented within the first term of the Labour Party government. Mr. Speaker, we have already implemented the first phase of UHC. Mr. Speaker, our government has launched the maternal and child health services on the phase one of UHC. I am proud to say, Mr. Speaker, that every pregnant woman will be able to access services of ultrasound and laboratory services at no cost through primary health facilities on the island. This became effective on June 1st this year, Mr. Speaker. Our government is a caring government, Mr. Speaker. You may be aware, Mr. Speaker, that our government launched from July 1st this year the Golden 80 Plus Health Package. This benefit package for elderly citizens of age 80 and over includes the following, Mr. Speaker. One, the provision of prescription drugs at community wellness centers at no cost. Two, access to one annual hearing test at the community wellness centers offering the services. Three, eye care services at our community wellness centers. Four, access to eye screening and surgery at the Cuban Eye Clinic. 
our government will continue to roll out universal health care as we believe, Mr. Speaker, that health is a fundamental right and must be made available to all. We recognize, however, Mr. Speaker, that the provision of health care services to all cannot happen overnight as we need to identify the additional health resources to finance the cost of health services. Health care is expensive, Mr. Speaker, and our government intends to make the tough but necessary choices to implement UHC. We will not do like the previous government, Mr. Speaker, in which health care regress under the term in office. They spoke about national health insurance for five years, Mr. Speaker, and that is all they did. Talk, words with no action. After the failed five to stay alive promise made in the manifesto of 2016, they again tried to fool the St. Lucia public with the same trickery by promising five for five, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the St. Lucian public saw five for five as a six for a nine. This so-called promise, Mr. Speaker, included medical care for all, Mr. Speaker, through some national health insurance scheme. This fluff and bluff former government, Mr. Speaker, attempted to again fool the people of St. Lucia by stating that they would introduce national health insurance with up to $75,000 in benefits per person per year. They stated further, they stated further, Mr. Speaker, that health care will be free for the elderly, unemployed, and single mothers. Mr. Speaker, this strategy did not work this time around. As the people of St. Lucia told the former Prime Minister, fool me once, shame on me. Shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And indeed, the people of St. Lucia spoke loud and clear on the 26th of July, 2021. It appears that the leader of the opposition did not hear them, Mr. Speaker, as he's still up to his same old tricks, telling St. Lucians, that by now he would have implemented his national health insurance scheme. This indeed was a scheme, Mr. Speaker. As the Honorable Member for Beaufort South has stated in very clear and unambiguous terms that there were no documents in the Ministry of Health that showed the plans for national health insurance. We can recall, Mr. Speaker, that the former Prime Minister had indicated early during his term in office that a white paper would be presented on the health sector. When he was questioned by a journalist at the time about the update on the white paper, he ignored her, Mr. Speaker. It appears, Mr. Speaker, that the leader of the opposition left with his paper on national health insurance as none of the technocrats in the ministry have those documents. However, Mr. Speaker, he has not stated how he planned to finance national health insurance, apart from stating that the working public will have to contribute to the health insurance. But he did not state how government would finance its contribution and how it intended to meet the additional cost of its so-called scheme. In St. Lucia, the word scheme has a particular meaning, and that meaning is appropriate for what was being contrived by the former Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, our second strategic priority is to reopen the St. Jude's Hospital within the shortest period of time. We have completed phase one, Mr. Speaker, of sanitizing the buildings, and we will be moving to start phase two of completing the buildings. And I have made it clear in this Honorable House, Mr. Speaker, that the only way St. Jude's shall not be completed is if the world comes to an end prior to the term of this SLP administration. That's right, that's right. And you can take that to the bank, Mr. Speaker. That's right, that's right. Mr. Speaker, the plans are advanced. The leader of the opposition, aided and abetted by his, his apostles, continue to embark on a smear campaign using propaganda, lies and deceit designed to discredit the work of our government and to attempt to cover up the mess they created at St. Jude's by spending over hundred million dollars on an unnecessary incomplete building. 
our third strategic priority, Mr. Speaker, is to ensure that the OKEU will be adequately resourced with proper emergency services. We have, Mr. Speaker, taken control of the OKEU hospital after it was handed over to Health Cayman, Mr. Speaker, another failed experiment of the former government. We now have to ensure that we allocate resources to ensure that OKEU can provide health services to effectively implement universal health care. On the issue of crime, Mr. Speaker, our government understood clearly that there are no quick fix solutions to crime, that addressing crime requires root and branch reform that involves addressing the social structures giving rise to crime. Crime should not be politicized, Mr. Speaker. And we would have thought that the former Prime Minister would have learned his lesson when he uttered the words, Kenny could not, but I will. You would have thought that those words would have haunted the leader of the opposition. But no, Mr. Speaker, he has absolutely no shame in again pretending that he somehow again has the solution to address crime. Mr. Speaker, our government is under no illusion about the systemic problems and challenges that crime presents. And as a result, it's taking an approach that will provide for a long-term solution. The issue of crime has to be addressed at many levels, Mr. Speaker, and our government is determined to implement a comprehensive approach to crime. We have, Mr. Speaker, underinvested in citizen security, and we need to provide additional resources to ensure that we can improve the security of our people. Our government has already increased the allocations for our crime fighting strategy through the purchase of vehicles, providing resources for training, and we commence the renovation of the Viewfort Police Station and the construction of the new Grosile Northern Headquarters. Mr. Speaker, our government is under no illusion that the issue of crime is one which requires sustained effort and can only be effectively addressed over the long term. We are, however, committed, Mr. Speaker, to effectively confront the crime problem head on and to commit to provide the additional resources required to fight crime. The issue of crime is such a vexing issue that the heads of government in CARICOM held a two-day regional symposium on the 7th and 18th of April this year. The declaration following the symposium rightly recognized violent crime as, and I quote, multifaceted in nature and its pervasive effects requiring a robust regional response that includes a public health response and a societal response including family, church, academia, cultural and sporting personalities, minority political parties, and the wider civil society." Unquote. Crime is a global issue, and to effectively tackle it, we must also address the issue of the illegal importation of guns from the United States to the Caribbean region. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister highlighted the strategic approach as follows, and I quote, our strategic approach to reversing the rise and, and any normalization of violent crime will be focused on strengthening law enforcement and making social interventions." Unquote. The reference for this quote, Mr. Speaker, is on page 29 of the 2023-2024 budget speech. The areas of focus include strengthening the legislation, improving and upgrading our human resources for training and engaging the regional security system to assist our local police, hiring new police officers and improvement of physical facilities and working conditions. Mr. Speaker, our government has recognized that we have traditionally underinvested in both health and citizen security over the years and there is need to provide additional resources. We also recognize that in so doing, we must ensure that this does not compromise our economic sustainability. 
Mr. Speaker, the good news is that the economy has recovered at a record pace from the contraction caused by the global pandemic and the mismanagement of the economy by the former administration. And it is now clear that we were already in a recession before COVID, Mr. Speaker, as the economy contracted by 0.3% in 2019. While it is recognized that the continued growth of the economy will provide additional resources for all sectors of the economy, including health and citizen security, the magnitude of the challenges facing these sectors requires additional resources, Mr. Speaker. In the case of health, Mr. Speaker, expenditure has averaged around 5% of GDP. And the source of this data, I can provide it, give you the, the, the website to get it at any time you would so desire, Mr. Speaker. In 2020, health expenditure as a percentage of GDP was 6.7%, but this was due to the substantial contraction in GDP. Typically, the, medium, the median health expenditure as a percentage of GDP is over 9% of GDP. Given our population demographics, Mr. Speaker, in which the elderly will form a larger percentage of the population given the declining birth rate and increasing life expectancy, there will be a greater demand for health services as older people tend to demand more health services than younger people. It is clear, therefore, Mr. Speaker, that we need to increase our expenditure on health services to eventually reach at least 8% of GDP over the medium to long term. Mr. Speaker, ever since the Prime Minister announced the health and security levy in his budget statement, the apostles of the United Workers Party and the leader of the opposition have engaged in a vicious, deceitful, dishonest, propaganda crusade in the attempt to vilify the government. Mr. Speaker, the mischief of the UWP led by the leader of the opposition knows no bounds. Distorting the truth with impunity, they have indicated that the tax would be inflationary. They also indicated that it would be compounded as the base of the tax would be on the final price inclusive of VAT. The leader of the opposition then stated that he did not see the increase in additional resources in the budget for health and security as the allocations actually fell. The final lie I will debunk, Mr. Speaker, is that the levy is a replacement for the 2.5% reduction in VAT that the former administration implemented. Mr. Speaker, I will debunk all of these specious red herring statements made by the leader of the opposition, who we know is a stranger to the truth. First, Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister clearly stated that the health and security levy of 2.5% will be on goods and services except on food items, medicines, selected building materials, medical equipment, and security equipment. This levy will therefore, contrary to the leader of the opposition's propaganda, have minimal inflationary impact and is designed to avoid any additional administrative burden and cost to businesses. True to his word, Mr. Speaker, the Health and Citizen Security Bill provides exemptions from the items identified above. The second lie that has been actually widely circulated by the UWP the leader of the opposition and his apostles is that the levy will be compounded as it would apply on the final price. Effectively, the, 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 the propagandists were saying that the 2.5% would be greater than 2.5% as it would apply on the final price inclusive of that. This is again another lie. Now debunked by the bill we have before us. Mr. Speaker, Clause 4 states clearly that the levy is to be applied at the rate of 2.5% on the cost, insurance, and freight, or CIF value of the goods. It's very clear. There is no ambiguity. 
This means that it, it will not be compounded by applying it on the landed cost, which includes all other taxes and charges, including custom service charge, import duties, and VAT, Mr. Speaker. In the case of services, Mr. Speaker, the levy is to be applied on the following. One, services provided by a resident to a resident in St. Lucia. Two, services provided by a non-resident to a resident in St. Lucia. And three, services provided by a business established and carrying on business from outside of St. Lucia to the local branch of the business in St. Lucia. The rate of the levy on services is 2.5%, Mr. Speaker. Clause 10 of the bill further states, and I quote, Mr. Speaker, subject to subsection 2, a registered person shall pay the levy to the controller of inland revenue on one, services provided by a resident to a resident in St. Lucia, Two, services provided by a non-resident to a resident in St. Lucia. And three, services provided by a business established and carrying on business from outside of St. Lucia to the local branch of the business in St. Lucia. Unquote. The third lie is that we have not increased the quantum of resources as according to the leader of the opposition, he did not see it reflected in the budget estimates for the fiscal year 2023-2024. Mr. Speaker, this statement is coming from the leader of the opposition who used to be the Minister for Finance and should know better, Mr. Speaker. It is abundantly clear, Mr. Speaker, that the government is embarking on UHC and will require additional resources to implement this bold, ambitious, and revolutionary initiative. We are also investing significant resources in St. Jude's, Mr. Speaker. So in the case of St. Jude's, the project will be implemented via the design finance construct method, and therefore the expenditure will not as yet be reflected in the budget, Mr. Speaker. But we must have the resources available to meet this cost, Mr. Speaker. So even though it's not reflected there, that does not mean provisions have not been made to deal with it, Mr. Speaker. Similarly, Mr. Speaker, the government has entered into bold agreements for the Viewfort and Grosile police stations. These amounts will not as yet be reflected in the budget estimates, but we must prepare for the payment of such in the future. Mr. Speaker, a budget is an annual financial estimate which must be seen within a wider context of the medium term and prudent fiscal policy. Notice I said prudent and not imprudent fiscal policy dictates that we make arrangements to finance the additional cost of health and security. The final lie, Mr. Speaker, and to put things in proper perspective is that the levy is a replacement tax for the reduction in VAT. Now, Mr. Speaker, first I would like to state categorically that the former administration engaged in what can only be described as fiscal folly in reducing the VAT by 2.5%. Mr. Speaker, all of our multilateral institutions were dumbfounded by this policy move by the former administration. These institutions included the IMF, World Bank and the ECCB. Mr. Speaker, these institutions cannot in any way be described as political and will assess the policy purely on the basis of its technical merits. This is also the view of our government as the country lost over $200 million for a policy that was implemented purely for political gimmick. Mr. Speaker, our government has moved on and we were looking at policy options to finance the increased cost of health and citizen security as these are areas of very high priority for our government. The Minister for Finance must be commended, Mr. Speaker, for coming up with a bold, ingenious and innovative solution for funding the increased cost of health and citizen security. Mr. Speaker, budgets are all about making policy choices and trade-offs. 
We believe that the two and a half percent levy is necessary. And just as the benefits far outweigh the cost, and if we do not provide the additional resources for health and citizen security, it will endanger the sustainability of the economy and our development. The people of St. Lucia want and deserve better health care, Mr. Speaker. And many of the unemployed, poor, and elderly need UHC as they cannot afford health care. Similarly, all of our citizens need security as crime is now a national challenge. To address these issues, we need the additional resources. And this is why I am giving my wholehearted support to this bill, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I end by saying may God continue to bless the Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, continue to guide his hand and continue giving him the wisdom for him to get our country on a more solid platform. Sir, I yield the floor. Thank you very much.